and welcome to another edition of Beer for Breakfast ABV. I am Danielle from The Moog Show on 91X. As always, I've got my beer drinking partner in crime, Paul Segura. What's up? Brewmaster of uh, Research and Development at Carl Strauss. And today we've got Benchmark Brewing with us. We've got co-founders Rachel and Matt. How's it going, guys? Good. Super duper. How are you? Good. So before we came on, we had your table beer. Yes. Which was a delicious, crisp, refreshing 4% beer. Yep. I still have some. For, well, well, you know, <laughs> some of us couldn't savor it long enough. Uh, but for anyone who's not aware of what a table beer is, can you just kind of give the Reader's Digest version? Uh, tiny little Belgian beer. Citrusy, peppery, a little bit of pear character to it. Just all day drinker of the Belgian Extremely world. Extremely crushable. Crushable. That yeah. is one of my key words on that beer. Belgian yeah. lawnmower beer. Yep. Belgian <laughs> lawnmower yep. beer. <laughs> is, there, is there a reason that you don't see table beers like more frequently at breweries? Yeah, they're teeny. They're at <laughs> 4%. Well, so most of the Belgian brewers make them, but being low in alcohol, they don't have the preservative that is the alcohol, so they don't travel very well. So making it all the way over to us here on the West Coast, when they do, they're not very good. They just don't age well. And so making a nice, fresh, clean, delicious one locally and drinking it here makes mm -hmm. way salute, more sense. I salute you guys for making it. Um, because you're also educating people about yes. what it is. But it's not just sort of a golden colored beer. It could be just about any style of beer that's lighter in alcohol, right? I, so I've actually been obsessed with Belgian style table beers for over a decade. I've made so many different varieties. We got super lucky. I made a full size, full scale batch of it um, yeah. with a new yeast I'd never worked with before. And he, he puts it on tap. He pulls a pint off and takes a sip and goes, Oh man! And I'm like, what is the matter? We have a whole like, batch of like, this beer. Man is he this? goes, I have to make this year round. Oh. <laughs> I'd, I'd finally found the one I wanted after so many years of searching, and finally had hit the nail. That's so. awesome. I love it, man. I'm glad you guys Thank do you. it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Super refreshing. That's... I mean, we're coming off of Labor Day weekend. That seems like the perfect Labor Day weekend yeah. barbecue. Oh yeah drink your face off kind of a Ex beer, but you don't exactly. embarrass yourself. <laughs> exactly. right. And yet we made it originally for Thanksgiving. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. It pairs incredibly easily. It just goes with everything. Whenever we do a pairing menu, um, we work through all of the other beers. And then when there's that one dish that you just can't get something to stick, yes. bring That's out the table beer. Table beer. <laughs> yep. So it's 99% of the time Because it's kind of earthy and a lot of the Thanksgiving foods are earthy, like turkey and stuffing and all of that. Yeah, but it also works with fried. It goes with fish tacos with the bright oh, citrusy yeah. character of a nice salsa. Mm. Um, it, it goes everywhere because it covers all of those bases. So. Well, Thanksgiving's yeah. around the corner. Remember what go. beer to Load pair up. with your yeah. Thanksgiving meal. So this beer mm. looks very different than table beer. Indeed. <laughs> Tastes pretty good. Too. Okay. This is a, an oatmeal stout, but another lower ABV, four and a half percent. Right. Oh, that's right. This smells like coffee and cocoa. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can hardly wait to drink it. Mm, and I see these these nice little little on the side yeah. here. We are about to hit GABF time, yes, and I are. see there is a mm -hmm. gold from 2014 and silver from 2016. Yep. Congratulations Thank on that. That's Congrats super on bringing exciting. home the bling, man. Yes. That's what Thank I'm talking you. about. Yeah. Representing San Diego. That's right. So with that in mind, um, I'm sure you guys have, I know you've already submitted your beers for this year if you're submitting. When you're looking at what you're going to submit to a big competition like the Great American Beer Festival, what are you thinking? What is your strategy when it comes to it? Oh, man. <laughs> There's so many things. <laughs> First of all, you read yes. the, uh, the newly published guidelines. style guidelines and mm -hmm. make sure that it didn't change from last year. Because yep. um, they did. Yeah, <laughs> they, they do often. Um, and then, you know, you only get four entries now for GABF. So you kind of, we play the numbers a little bit. Sometimes we look up how many entries were in this category last year. Um, right. So if and, it's like 400 something, you might want to go to a yeah, yeah, unless you're like category. dying to, you know, get some feedback on that beer, mm -hmm. you're probably going to go for a lower yeah. entered category. Okay. Well, you guys are both judges also, right? Yes, we are. Okay. Oh, so that helps. Wow, yeah. I, I'm amongst we're, experts. We're out there with Paul. Yeah. <laughs> Three judges around me. Okay, right. so I know that Paul really preps himself before he goes out there. What do you guys do to prep yourself to, to make sure your palate's where it needs to be for all of these beers? Sure. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's so much work once you're out there. Um, 
you know, we're basically slow down on consumption of all the fun flavors beforehand for a few days. Just kind of let the let the taste buds mellow out a bit um, and get reacclimated to to life. So we're avoiding the the jerk chicken and the exactly. the oh, Szechuan meals for a couple of days beforehand. And, and take some time while you're drinking beer to consider the flavors that are there, either actually jotting them down or you know just stopping and thinking about it because it's so different analyzing a beer than it is just enjoying one. Yeah, I know a lot of judges um, do cut out beer beforehand. I just can't quite get myself all the way there. So I try to do a little bit more of a focused drink on so it. So it's a uh, lot more, more than analytical. just going and being like, drinking be like, ooh, I like this. Oh, yeah. So oh, much oh, more. Yeah. <laughs> so much more. <laughs> so much more. <laughs> it is so much You're work. You're taking copious <laughs> notes on uh, everything from yeah. color to aroma to flavor, finish, body, I mean. So let's look at this beer then. A medal winning beer, one in the session beer category. Yeah, correct. As a session beer category, what were they looking for? As a judge, what are you looking for in this category? And what does this beer do for it? When you enter a beer in, in the session beer category, you have to call out the larger beer that you're making small. So a traditional oatmeal stout would not qualify because it is already a small beer. Mm -hmm. But we enter this beer as an American stout that has been made smaller. Okay. So um, that's that, that bitter hop finish. That's what kind of puts it over into the American stout um, category. And yeah, it just has to exemplify whatever is in the style guidelines for what you're calling out, but be small. Right. Mm. Yeah. So session that's beers essentially are lower ABV versions than other beers right correct okay so so i mean you were very well probably up against like ipas or pale ales or lagers so it could be correct. any of those styles mm -hmm. but just smaller wow yeah. yep. so back in 2014 that was the last year that ipas were actually in the session beer category as well Oh, um, it's so crazy to think it's, of IPA in a, in a session category yeah, yeah. at all it was <laughs> and the category was massive because of that it had everything that was made into a session beer in it. Um, and so that year we actually had a San Diego sweep. That was the year that we had a San Diego sweep of the session beer category. Um, rad. <laughs> us, Carl Strauss and Pizza, Pizza Port OB yeah. took home all the medals in that category. And funny story, yeah, story. Yeah. <laughs> we were sitting in the audience and, and they call out Pizza Port and Carl Strauss because they, they work their way up uh, to the gold. And, and after Matt's they like, read okay, those two names, category? I'm like, ah, we're done here. <laughs> I turned back around. I'm, I'm sitting there eating my breakfast, and Rachel starts elbowing me. That's you. That's <laughs> yeah. you. Get up there. I was like, no way. Oh, I have to say, the experience of being in that room as the announcements of all the medals are going out is so awesome, and the energy oh, is massive. Like, if you ever have the opportunity to go out to Denver for the Great American Beer Festival, it's so worth the trip. Especially when, like, you see your friends getting medals. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, yeah like, yeah. I know that person. And they we're, so, my beer. we're so lucky in San Diego because there's so many friends there. Yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah. I like we're to sit have a friend. by the side of the stage where people yeah. are coming off after getting their medals oh, so yeah. I could stand up and high five everybody <laughs> as they're coming off. And the stage. every single person remembers you when you do that, yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's so funny is it literally takes everybody leaving San Diego to go to Denver to be able to sit down and just have a beer with each other. <laughs> and I see out. so many of my friends once a year yeah. out there. And we're all in the same scene. Yeah. So going the opposite direction. Yes. This beer, Hop Chunks. Hop Chunks. Imperial IPA. Yes. Are First of all, hop chunks? super rad name. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> there is a definite sort of polyphenolic oh. veil to oh, it. Oh, most definitely. Yeah. Um, Ooh, that's we throw a monstrous amount of hops at this wow. thing. Um, and then we don't own a filter at Benchmark, so all of our beer is unfiltered. Oh, <laughs> you, you, are, you are ahead of the craze. <laughs> yeah, I see. Exactly. Yeah, I just, find filtering to be a pain in the butt. So. <laughs> and like you always say, what do you smell when you walk into a brewery that's filtering beer? Right. Amazing aroma. Right. Mm -hmm. And that means it's all leaving the yeah, actual it's beverage. It's not in the beer anymore. So right. I figured we're small enough. We can just... Well, there's an beer. amazing aroma coming off yes. of this one right now. So it's an Imperial. What does this weigh in at? Eight and a half. Eight and a half. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, we are a session beer brewery. Um, most of the time, but you know, we're Sometimes in San Diego. Big one. You gotta step it up and make the big ones. 
So how long has Benchmark been around for? Five years? Five years. Five years. Um, right there in Grantville. Mm -hmm. Can't miss it. Right next to the giant, giant Kaiser Permanente. If oh, you look yeah, for, the, for, for the flags that say beer, that's where Benchmark that's is. Us. That's how I that's always us. know. <laughs> but you just opened another tasting. We did. Right? Where is yes. that? It's in uh, Bay Park. That's really exciting. On Napier There's Street so at Marina. Awesome. Yeah. Well, congratulations Thank you. to that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's right yeah, down the street from, yeah. <laughs> from home base. Oh, from yeah. yeah. Um, I'm digging that. I'll be yeah. able to just go on my lunch break. Yep. Right? Nobody heard that. <laughs> <laughs> so when opening up another location, you know, you guys were there in your little spot for five years. When yes. you decided to open up a second tasting room, what were, what were your guidelines? What were you thinking? Did you have a part of town that you really wanted to be mm. in? Like... What goes into that? It wasn't so specifically one part of town as much as sort of criteria for the parts of town. We wanted a neighborhood that could use a brewery tasting room. Mm -hmm. We wanted a neighborhood that was sort of looking for that, you know, in literature they call it a third place. Um, the place that isn't your living room or your office that you are still comfortable in. Um, and Bay Park doesn't have a lot of that. You know, there's not many places you can take a stroller and, a, and your dog on a leash and have a beer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, there's there's, the closest, there's specifically like beer bar. there's specifically a brewery that I'm thinking of that no longer allows dogs that's in that area, yeah. which was such a I've been bummer. hearing a lot of about that one. I think they just <laughs> opened know. their patio Ooh. though, yeah. and the patio oh, is dog friendly. Oh, good. Okay, yeah. good. Okay. Look into it. I, I just, will. Yeah, I, I will. remember Thank hearing you. about I that very I appreciate recently. That. So. But, no, but, I, but I think that the dog <laughs> thing is huge because yeah. this is such a dog friendly city and. It's great that you can take your dogs there. It's great that you can take your family there. If you've got kids and you just want to go have a good beer, yeah, yeah. be in a cool, chill atmosphere, yeah. Benchmark seems like the place yeah, to go. Yeah, I just love that space. It's mm -hmm. so much fun. We get a nice bay breeze blowing through the whole space. Big old patio in the back coming up real soon. That's nice little front awesome. porch if you're lucky enough to get one of those seats. And Congrats, on. guys, on your new digs. Yeah, yeah. That'll be exciting. a perfect it's place to pregame uh, when rugby season starts again. Oh yeah. Oh, right yeah. there. Or yeah, we've been seeing some rugby there players. There yeah. <laughs> oh, I, oh, I need to hang out at Benchmark. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> well, yeah, Rachel and Matt, thank you so much for making time to come uh, on Beer Thanks for having ABV. us. Is there anything huge coming up that you want everyone to know about? Gosh, just come by Bay Park. Yeah, come by Bay Park. Check us out over there. Check out the new spot. Go to yeah. the OG spot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so where can people find yeah. out about what's going on? Our Facebook page uh, has all of our, you know, events that come up listed. We've already got Santa on there. We invite him out every year for, you know, photos with the kids. We've got Drinking with Matt on the last Saturday of every month at headquarters. Ooh. Always a good Who time. Who doesn't want to do that? Always a good <laughs> that time. That sounds awesome. <laughs> um, so, yeah, check There's it out. There's Thanksgiving, of course, with the yep. table beer. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. And then right. these and beer week. really awesome cans that I see. Can these be found around town on the tasting room? Yeah, your better bottle shops around town for sure. And then, yeah, we have them at both, both locations yeah. to go. Fantastic. Well, thank you guys so, so thank much. You. Appreciate thank you coming you. on. Paul, what? as always, I appreciate that you, you know, <laughs> that you come, me. that you show up, you know. And uh, it's thank free you, beer. right? Yeah, no, yeah, good luck rid of it's him. always <laughs> beer, you know. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us. As always, for Friday morning, Paul comes in studio at 9:20, and he tells the Moog Show what we should be drinking, what you should be drinking this weekend. So you want to tune in for that, and you can find all previous episodes of Beer for Breakfast at 91x.com. Thanks for watching, and cheers! Cheers, cheers. to local beer.